So here we have it. The man of the hour, former Major League <laughs> Baseball player, the Alabama kid. Please welcome Terrence Long in the house, baby. How are you? Eddie, what's up, man? What's going on? Oh, my God. You know, Terrence, I want to I wanna share this story, okay? This is the first time I ever went to a college football game Auburn versus Alabama, which one of the biggest rivalries in college football, right, Terrence? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so we're I'm at the Tiger Walk. I, I had no clue what that means until the fans explained this to me. Now remember, there's at least seventy to ninety thousand fans in this uh, yeah. in the stadium and outside, right? People are tailgating the whole nine, right? So there's a Tiger Walk, yep. which traditionally explain what Tiger Walk means, Terrence. Man, that Tiger Walk, man, it's just, it's a whole, it, you have, well, you got a chance to experience it. You have to experience it because it, you, know, you can't, you can't really explain it unless you're there. You know, it, it's just, it's a tradition. I think it's more tradition than anything, but it's exciting. You know what I mean? It's a simple walk. Right. But, you know, it's been, it, it's just a tradition. And I think, you know, they do it every home game, but it's just something about that Tiger Walk when it's the Iron Bowl. Okay, so... Like, it's it's, a, it's, it's on a whole other level with that. So, for you viewers that are listening right now, Tiger Walk also means that you got players, Auburn, the home team, is entering the stadium, and you got fans, right, on the side, waving to them, yes. right? So then, yep. I see these guys walking, and I'm like... Like, what, what's going on here? These guys are old. And I and then I turn around, and I'm like, and, and you're, you're the first person. I'm like, listen, are these the players right now? And, you, and then you started laughing. You're like, no, th this is just the alumni. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so I had no clue. And then I, um, then, um, I asked, you know, when I asked you, you know, who, are the, who, who is this the alumni? And you're like, you're like, yes, this is the alumni. And then I said, listen, I'm from New York. This is my first experience at, at Auburn. And you're like, oh, wow. Um, are you a Yankees or a Mets fan? I'm like, oh, I'm a diehard Yankees fan. And you're like, and you know, you weren't like, you know, some stars, you, do, you know who I am. You weren't that guy. You were like, yeah, I, I don't know if you remember me, but my name is Terrence Long. You were so humble. And I was like, oh, shit, Terrence, the flip, right? The Jeter flip. You're like, yeah, man. And I gave you a hug. Isn't that yeah. crazy? What's the odds of that? That's, man, that's crazy. 90,000 people. And I and I run into one guy that remembers the flip like yesterday. Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying to myself, I'm like, oh, my God, Terrence Long, you know. And, and, and then I said, listen, you got to come on my show, man. We got to talk about your journey. You know, I was a fan of yours. I was like, yo, this guy could hit because I'm a left-handed hitter too. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, not at the big league level, of course. But so, and then finally I got you. And I remember when Andre Dawson, he said in his Hall of Fame speech, if you love baseball, baseball will love you. And yeah. this is what exactly what happened. So here he is, Terrence Long in the house again. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, I finally, man, I finally got to you, man. I've been, I've been trying, man. Hey, listen, I, I finally get it. made it work. You got five kids. I get it, man. You know what I mean? I was like, but finally Terrence, made it work. remember I told you, Terrence, don't big league me, man. Don't big league me, man. <laughs> hey, I did. Hey, but I did hit you back, though. You know what I mean? You I did, did. You did. You did. It took. It may have taken me a week to get back to you, but I did hit you back. Exactly. Well, actually, you know what? Your birthday was a month ago, right? Leap year. Yep. Happy birthday. No leap year. Yep, no leap year. So I got um, birthday wishes on the 28th and the 1st. So do you celebrate like both? It depends. I get I get I get messages on the 28th. And then I'll get um I'll get calls. My mom's not gonna call me to the first. Mm, okay. She because she no, she, she's a firm believer. If it wasn't a leap year, I would have been born on, on uh, March 1st. So, you know, she's going to call me on the, on the 1st of March. Mm. Okay, all right. Well, that's mom. There you go. Yeah. Terrence, a little towards the center. Hold on, not that way. Let me get. 
Let me get back right in this chair again. I slid my chair over a little yeah, bit. Yeah, there you go. That's, That's what perfect. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little yeah. more left. A little more. A little more. Go. That'll be yeah, my yeah. right on the yeah, TV. Yeah, So you're yeah. right. Yeah. So that's perfect. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Terrence, when you played high school baseball, right, why'd you transfer to another school? What happened? Well, high school, you know, where I grew up, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty much the same thing down south. I mean, it's football. You know, I mean, it's I mean, every high school in the state of Alabama, except your private schools, any public school is going to pretty much be a football school. But my high school, it was a football school, but the baseball program was really successful, especially in the early '90s, like my freshman year, like in '92. The 92 team we had, we had five guys get drafted off that team. Wow. So it was, I mean, so baseball was, you know, it was, we were loaded, man. Like people, like people forget because it's such a football state. But we, like I said, that 92 team, we had five guys get drafted when I was a sophomore. Well, so when you were a sophomore? Yes, we had five guys get drafted off that team, off that 92 team. Any notable names that hit the league? Well, one, no, none of them hit the league, but one of them, uh, Robert Chancey. I'm going to tell you how good he was. He got drafted in the sixth round by the Orioles. Played two or three years of minor league ball, decided he didn't like it. Went to Houston, Texas with my cousin, Antoine Smith, mm -hmm. who played with um, – Buffalo Bills, Patriots, and um, Robert was that good. He went out to Houston, tried out for NFL, and uh, playing six years with Chicago Bay with uh, San Diego Chargers and Chicago Bears. That's how good he was. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's running back too. So, did he play high school football too? He played high school football, played high school uh, baseball, got drafted sixth round, played a few years minor league ball, decided he didn't like it, and he was like, you know what, I'm just going to try out for the NFL. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Ended up playing six years in the NFL. <laughs> how do you do that? Like, how do you, like, you know what, I'm sick of uh, baseball. Let me just go, let me go to a different sport right now. Yeah, didn't unbelievable even, athletes, man. Didn't even play college football, right? Nothing. No, nah, none of that. <laughs> Terrence, Unbelievable your, athlete. your sophomore year, were you like the man too, like besides those other five guys? Were you like part of that crew? Like, yo, this guy's the future. He's the man. You know what I mean? I'm going to tell you how good that team was, Eddie. Mm -hmm. For me to get on the field, I had to play first base. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I had to play first base. And I played, I played some as a freshman. Mm-hmm. But as a sophomore, I got on the field permanently, and you won't believe why. <laughs> Our first baseman kept kept breaking out, you know what I mean, allergies. So we just thinking, you know what I mean, it's just the trees and all that. But come to find out, first baseman was allergic to grass. Oh, my God. Thank God for him, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first baseman was allergic to grass, and that's how I ended up as a sophomore starting on varsity and playing first base. So now, Never played a day of outfield. Wow. Yeah, so it was – I was – I'm getting back center back. I had moved over a little bit. All right, you see that? There you go. I'm, I'm glad you noticed that. Yeah, but so you're, it was you're, – um, But you're very athletic, right? So, like, first baseman, yeah. I mean, you know, you're not that many athletic first basemen here and there. But I'm talking about you are more of an outfielder, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I knew uh, once I got drafted, I played um, played first. I played first base my first year in Kingsport, Tennessee. And after that, you know, they basically told me, "Hey, we're going to move you to the outfield." Did you have any offers uh, your, after your senior year to go to any big colleges, D one programs? Oh yeah, for sure. It was crazy because I had more. I had more D one basketball offers than I did baseball. Oh, so you played high school basketball too? Yeah, that was that was my sport. Yeah, that was my sport in high school. So, but um, 
had committed to LSU baseball and uh, decommitted and signed with Chipola Junior College before the draft. Oh, wow. But they ended up getting drafted first round. So, well, you know, you know how that goes. You know, you got to you gotta take, you gotta take that. In Alabama, In Alabama, what's it like when it comes to, like, you know, city championship in New York, they play either Yankee Stadium or City Field high school baseball, right? In Alabama, yeah. where do you guys play on the big stage? If you guys make it to the finals, well, if you make it to the finals now, now they have the double A, um, the double A park there, the the uh, Tampa Bay Rays, the uh, Montgomery Biscuits. They got a they got a double A team, but before we would play at um, Patterson Field, which is, I mean, which is the big city field. You know, back back when I was in school, they used to have Auburn, Alabama used to come play there. I mean, it's a really nice city field. But now, but now they do it there, and they do it at the. Um, they'll start some of the games. They have tournaments at the Double A Stadium, but most of the state championship games will be at um, Patterson Field. Mm, okay, so now you get drafted. How much? How much did you sign for? Uh, Ninety four. I got half a million. Okay. Well, what's the first yeah. car you bought? Let's let's get to the facts right now. <laughs> man, believe it or not, man, it was a. First car I ever had, because my mom, they didn't believe in that. And if I get buy a car, you're gonna buy your own. So it was a um it was a Ford Explorer. Okay. Yeah, it was a Ford Explorer, man. I was I was big into car stereos back then. You know, I was still 18. Oh, of course, yeah. So yeah, I bought a Ford Explorer and my first my first system in my in my Ford was 16 8 inch speakers I put in there. <laughs> <laughs> so were you that yeah, guy? 16 oh, 8 inch speakers. Were you were you that guy that like you, you know you, got, you had a red light and it's just blasting and people are like yo my ears are killing me. Were you that guy? Yeah, yeah, I used to, yeah, that was big back then, man. You shake the ground. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you try to shake the ground. The louder the better back then. So then you and your friends would like uh, compete with each other, right? Like he'll bring his system. Oh yeah. And, right. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> so all right. So now, I, um, all right. So, you know, 500,000, that's a lot of money back then. You still got to manage it, right? You get to the minors. How hard was it to adjust? I think the toughest part for me, um, it wasn't the leaving home part because I had already put in my mind that I was going to have to leave home. Mm -hmm. And I think the major adjustments was being so successful in high school. I hit 608 my senior year with 16 home runs with like 60 RBIs in like 18 games. 16 home so, runs. So, yeah, 18 games. God. And – my first year of pro ball, I hit 230, hit 12 home runs. I can't remember how many RBIs. And I was like, man, a lot of adjustments had to be made. A lot of adjustments. I went from hitting 608 to 230. So in my mind, being an 18-year-old kid was like, man, all right, I got to get to work now. Totally different. I got to get to work. Did you lose any confidence at the plate? Why Say it again, you, Eddie. Did you lose any confidence at the plate? No, I wasn't. It wasn't the fact that um, I lost confidence. I think it was just pitching was, of course, 10 times better than what I saw in high school. Pitching, pitching wasn't very good in high school. You know, I, you know what I mean? I'm honest to say that. It wasn't. You had a few guys that I faced that was D1 guys, but overall – but seeing that D1 guy every time when you get to minor league baseball, it wasn't confidence because I knew I could hit. It was just getting in there and just, you know, just staying positive because I knew I wasn't going to quit. I knew that. Right. But I just, I didn't fail a lot until I got the pro ball. So it took, it took me a minute to get, to get into that. 
Did anybody give you like the best tip in the minors, any coaches or players or anybody say, hey, Terrence, this is what you need to do with your hands or your legs or whatever? Really, the good thing about it, coming up through the minor leagues with me, you know I mean, I didn't, like, no one really tried to change my swing. You know, I, I mean, I was a natural hitter. You know, it wasn't, you know, I would hit for power, but the first thing they told me is, like, you're so good the other way. And, I, and that's one thing I taught myself because in high school, my high school field, I'm a lefty. So down the right field line was about 450. Mm. And then left field was like 275, 280. <laughs> so I was like, okay, if I'm going to hit homers, I'm going to learn how to hit this ball to the short side of the field. Right. So right. in high school, I used to always hit opposite field home runs. So I had to teach myself because it was so deep the right field. So I think that was a blessing having that, that short left field porch. It taught me to hit. It taught me early how to hit the ball the other way. So, speaking of hitting the ball the other way, would you let the ball get deep in the zone, or would you still hit it out in front? I'll just let it. You know, what I mean, one thing I've always been able to do is let that ball travel, and just not too deep. But I like to catch it middle of the plate. Mm -hmm. Is what I say because. I feel like middle of the plate. I got room for air. If if it gets in on me a little bit, I still got enough. And if I'm in the middle and I catch it out in front a little bit, I still got enough to stay through it. So, man, that was just something I taught myself coming up through high school. And I just, you know what I mean, I carried that on with me, you know what I mean, through my career. So if I let that ball get to the middle of the plate, I got I got room for error. If it gets in on me a little bit, I still got a chance. Right. And if I'm out in front a little bit without being too far out in front, I still got a chance. Right. So you can still you can still hit in the gap. Yeah. Right. Right. So then when you get when you got the call up with the New York Mets. Now this really sucks. I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm visualizing being you. You get called up. You're feeling good. I'm like, all right, you know, where was it? Was it at Shea Stadium or where, where was yeah, it? Yeah, it was at Shea. Okay, so now you come to New York, right? Now, you're a country boy, man. You haven't seen shit yeah. like this in your life, all right? <laughs> so it's like you got big lights, big city, right? <laughs> so what happened yep. that day when you got called up? Talk to me. Oh, man. I, I can't, man. I just, the only thing I remember was getting the call. And I remember, I remember going to the airport. And after that, man, once I got, once I got off that plane, and I finally got the Shea, I was like, man, like, I was like, man, this this a different world. This is a different world. What I'm used to up here, man. It was. And then you know, being around the players that they had, that the Mets had, then you had. Hundley, you know, you had Ricky Henderson there. So just Bonilla. So it was just like, but they was they was there with me the whole time. It was like, man, they used to call me a young buck, man. Just just be ready. I was like, I'm as ready as I'm gonna get. I was like, <laughs> didn't get much time, but made it easier being around those guys, man. They made it so man, Fonzie, you know. I, Fonzie, you know, I played with Fonzie and winter ball. So I knew I knew Fonzie, so that was cool. So that was they made me feel at home, man, because I ain't gonna lie, Eddie, man. I was so scared. Who was who was yeah. the who was your uh neighbor as far as the locker? So who were you next to when you got called up? I was there because I was there. I was next to um it was Fonzie and I was right next to Fonzie, and I can't remember who was next to me. But I, 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 you know, I mean, I, I didn't want to say I was overstepping my boundaries, but I asked him, "Can you please put me next to somebody that I know?" Because oh. you know, Ricky, you know, Ricky, I couldn't, like, I, I felt out of line to ask my locker to be next to Ricky Henderson. I wasn't gonna do that. Right, right. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, you can put me next to Fonzie because I know Fonzie, so it, it'll be good." So, and, and this, this what sucks, right? So what happened? You 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 pinch hit or something like that that game? I got three at bats. I got three at bats. 
Now nah, this is on this is on two different call ups now. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, hold on. I got so, three. So that call up, did you start the game or you just came in? No, 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 I didn't start. Okay, I was go on, ahead. I was on the bench. I got three at bats and two different call ups, man. And just my luck, two of those at bats was off of uh, Benitez. Armando well, Benitez? with the Marlins. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so he's throwing at so least 98, was, right? Right there. Yes. Yeah, so I, I got three at bats and I had three Ks. I had three at bats with the Mets in the big leagues and all three were Ks. So did they tell you, okay, it's time to go back to AAA now? Yeah, because I was there. You know what I mean? The good thing about it, when they called me up, I'm, I'm trying to remember who got injured. I want to say it was um, Agbayani that got injured. Mm, okay. So, so when I got there, they pretty much told me that I wasn't, you know I mean, I wasn't going to start. It was just basically the extra body. Mm-hmm. And they were honest. They were like, you put in the work, you know what I mean? It's just just giving you a shot just to give you, because they was like, we plan on having you here next year. Right. Like, they was planning on having me come up and, and have a chance to make the team. And um, and I was prepared for it. Went to AAA and was having a monster year and came out of the game, came out of the game early. So I'm like, Skip, what's going on, man? I'm, I'm in a groove. I'm feeling good. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he didn't tell me at the time I was getting traded. He was like, um, Nah, we got this one under control. Just get just get ready for tomorrow. So I was like, all right. But then come the whole time, they took me out when when they was Oakland was about to make the deal. They wanted me off the field right then. So like I I had no idea what was going on. So then you got traded. And this is in the middle of the season? Yeah, it was in. I was in Norfolk, so I think we had like, I think we probably had like three months left. Yeah, I think we had like three months left. I think it was right after the break. I think it was right after the break, which would be July because the trade happened at the deadline, July thirty first. So, yeah. yeah, and that trade happened at they had the midnight to make the deal. I got traded at eleven fifty eight. Mets waited. They waited to the last two minutes to make the deal. Wow. Yeah. So now you, yeah. now you're at the Pacific Coast League, right? Is that the PCL? Yeah. PCL. Okay. Yeah. So um, that year was it, is is it still ninety nine? Yeah, this was still ninety nine. Okay, so ninety nine. You're at the Pacific Coast League. Did you feel like, wow, this is this is great out here? You know, I'm on the West Coast now. Yeah, yeah, it was man. It was. I think after the trade, I was, I was dis, I was kind of disappointed because I'm leaving Norfolk, where it's nice, it's beautiful right here in this league. Mm-hmm. So I get traded to Oakland, and my first stop was in Calgary. And it's 30 degrees out there. Oh, wow. I'm like, oh, my God, it's 30 degrees. So I fly into Canada and play there. It is 30 degrees my first game once I get traded. Hmm. And I was like, oh, I was miserable. Like, it was – I just left Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah. 75, 80 degrees is nice. And I come here and it's 30 degrees. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, There's no way this just happened to me. And this is like end of that July was at that time. at 30 degrees at night, right? <laughs> oh my God. I was like, what's going on? Like, I've never been up that way before. So I'm just, I mean, I'm not thinking about it. I'm like, oh my God, it's freezing. And I'm not a cold weather guy. So of course. that that was tough. That was tough on me. That was the toughest part of the trade. Was going to Calgary. If I would, if I could have went anywhere else, my first game, I would have been fine. Right, right. But right, the team so, was on. So yeah. now you're in AAA, right? So you're yes. Obviously, you still you got two, three months left. You put up numbers, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, you put up numbers. 
it. And then, so up, now, man? over the winter time, I'm assuming you got invited to Big League Camp in 2000? Yeah, I got invited um, to finish out that season, 99. We will end up winning Vancouver, that Vancouver team. Mm -hmm. We end up winning the AAA World Series. Mm -hmm. I was the MVP of that series. So I'm feeling good going into the offseason. And went into spring training, 2000, my first spring training with Oakland. And absolutely, yeah, tore it up in spring. But the last week, the last week of spring, end up getting it like dirt sliding, getting dirt in my eye, and then end up getting the end up getting the eye infection. Oh. The last week of spring training. Oh my. God. So I was out. I mean, I missed the last week. So I was like, you know, hey man, back to the hey, back to grinding, man. You gotta you gotta go back. You know, I mean, I was locked in. I knew wherever I went, I was going because my mind was already set that right. this is where I need to be. So did you um so what happened that final week? You didn't make the big league team in April? No, I didn't make the team, didn't play much that last week because I had that eye infection and um, ended up going to Sacramento, AAA Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And just, we couldn't start at home because the new stadium wasn't ready. So we had to start the season on the road. Mm -hmm. So I never got a chance to play at the new stadium in Sacramento, but we opened up on the road and man, I just, and I just went off. Like you were crushing. I went off the first one. Yeah, I went off. Like man, April. April. I went. I think. I think on my call up when I got called up. I think I was hitting like three forty something with like nine, ten bombs. It, it was something ridiculous. Oh, like I, I got off video to game a great numbers, start. Right? Video game numbers. Yeah, it was. It, it felt like that. Like I hadn't been locked in like that since high school, and it came at the right time. It's amazing how the mind just clicks. Like it just, you know, your mind is like, okay, I figured this out. I know how to hit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be called up, and then your confidence is sky high, right? So you get called up. What month was it? Yeah, two thousand. Uh well, I miss April. I got called up in May. Oh, okay. So yeah, I got called up in May. So Billy Bean was looking at yeah, those numbers just, in the minors, right? Yeah. He was like, oh, all right, bring this guy up quick, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 So I, I got called up in May and and went and just it just kept going. Just, you know what I mean? I just I went off, man. Like like 288 had 18 bombs, like 88 ribbies, and I missed a month. Wow. Yeah. So, Cook would probably yeah. Like so six, I was seven home runs that month, you know? Yeah. I, I was, because I was, man, I was locked in. That's the best I felt at the plate. When you, and, it, and it's funny because it, it, just carried, it just carried over. Right. Terrence, when you're locked in, yeah. right? You know how they, you know, nowadays they're like, look for this pitch. I just think batting instructors make these hitters think too much. And I think that's why the batting averages are so low nowadays. Yeah. You know, what was your uh, mentality? Yeah. Like, like, here's the thing. I had a chance to talk to Barry Bonds, right? I met him at West LA Little League. I teased him. I was like, he thought I was one of the parents because I was living in LA, right? And his daughter was playing softball. Yeah. So he gives me an urban hug. Like he thought I was one of the dads, right? So I was like, listen, I think, I think I know you from somewhere. You look familiar. I was teasing him, right? He's like, oh, yeah? I'm like, oh, yeah. I think you're that lefty from Arizona State, man. Is that you? And he goes, man, you New Yorkers know how to mess with me, don't you? I'm like, come on, Barry. That was a good one, wasn't it? He goes, yeah, man. Have a seat. Let's talk. <laughs> so when, when I talked to Barry Bonds about hitting, I said, do you look for a certain pitch? He says, no. He says, I draw a circle. And if the ball is in that zone, whether it's a changeup, slider, fast, whatever it is, I'm crushing it. What was your mentality? Yeah. Right? How? What was your approach? Well, of course, yeah, of course, I wasn't that good. So what I did was I, I, I wasn't good at at looking for pitches mm -hmm. because one thing I've learned 
Good fastballs, you can hit those. Mm -hmm. Good sliders, good curveballs, good changeups. You're not gonna you're not gonna hit those anyway, not consistently. So I stayed on the fastball. I don't care what, I don't care what this pitch is doing. I stayed on the fastball because if he's only gonna give me one, I want to make sure I'm in position that I don't miss it. Right. Because if I miss it, then I gotta worry about hitting the stuff that I do not want to hit anyway. Right. So I wasn't a coming up through the minor leagues, I always hit third. Like I always hit in the middle, third, fourth. So I get to the big leagues and I'm leading off. So I'm like, oh my God. All right. But what helped me, I remember having this conversation with Art Howe, probably one of the best managers I ever played for. I told, I was like, I was like, Skip. I was like, I hit third coming up. I was like, leading off. I'm like, <laughs> I know that first pitch heat is coming. I know that. Right. And, you know, early, you know what I mean? They gave me the green light. They was like, hey, just get yourself comfortable. And, you know, we'll make adjustments from there. And I think I, I know that's what helped me my rookie year. Because mm. they allowed me to hit, even though I was leading off, they still allowed me to be aggressive you know what i mean that's all i knew and up there it got me in trouble sometimes right but they also allowed me to stick with it and it got me out of trouble a lot too so mm. was art how more of a player's coach was he like was he that guy oh for sure just go do your job that's right. it that's so, it just go do your job we're all professionals simple, right? yeah we're all professionals go do your job but listen, you got to tell me about that 2000 team, man. You guys had, and listen, may he rest in peace. I'm sorry that you lost your teammate, Jeremy Giambi, yeah. you know, but Jason Giambi, you had, man, you had Ron Gant, you got, you had Tejada, you had, you had a couple of New Yorkers, uh, Frank Manichino, you know. Yeah, and Frankie, yeah, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, like, listen, you guys were young. Did you guys, like, yeah. Party your asses off. I mean, did it like? Did you guys go out and just have a blast? Because it looked like you had you guys had great chemistry. Man, that was that was the best times. Like anytime, any days you spend in the majors are great. Mm -hmm. But those man, those years in Oakland with those guys, man, it was it was like a it was like a high school team in the majors like you know high school you joke around you you kid you have fun man that was every single day like so and when i got there you you guys couldn't wait to get to the ballpark the next day right you guys were so yeah, excited that was it. yeah that was it. it it wasn't even like honestly it's crazy man because we had more fun we had more fun at the ballpark than we did outside the ballpark. That's the craziest thing. So for like the reporters, uh -huh. the oh, reporters wow. would come in, man. They would need earplugs because the music, the music just be so loud. And we used to have the little race cars. Everybody bought the little race cars, and we had the back table set up. That was the mechanic shop. Like it was, like it was, it was high school all over again. So Art Howe, Billy Bean, all those guys didn't care. They're like, let them, let them enjoy it, right? That's it, man. Just do your job. Right. That's it. Just do your job. So at, at a at a ballpark, when it comes to like a seven p.m. game, right? What time would you guys show up that you guys were so excited you couldn't wait to see each other again at the stadium? Man, two o'clock, one forty-five, two. Mm -hmm. Like we would get there. We would get there two, two and a half hours before BP would even, before stretching starts and just, and just hang out around the clubhouse, man. It was just. See, I love that feeling. I love that feeling. Just oh, shooting man, the shit. It's the best feeling in the world. And, right? It, that's what you miss about the game, man. It's your teammates. It's just, you know, like you could talk about a TV show. You could talk about a film. You could talk anything, like just hanging out, right? It was like your brothers. Oh, yeah. That was for sure, man. It was. I mean, it was family. You know, I mean, you spend more time with them guys than you do with your family. So, and it was, man, it was unbelievable times, man. You just had to be there. Like, I can't even explain it. Like, it's, I can't even explain it. Terrence, did 
Was the outfield in Oakland terrible? Be honest. Because that stadium looks horrendous to me. It's, it's unbelievable until football season come in. Mm, okay. Now, when football season come in, it gets a little choppy out there. But early in the year, man, they do a great job, man. They do a great job on that field. It's just when football came in towards the end of the season, mm-hmm. man, it got rough now. That, out, <laughs> that outfield became rough. A lot, a lot more choppier than it was in early in the year. Early in the year it was flawless, mm-hmm. like I'm talking about flawless. But when football season rolled in, yeah, it went the, it went opposite, it went downhill. But they did a good job. The grounds crew did a great job keeping it, you know, keeping it up. But I knew it was tough on them. Who was your best friend on the team that you had dinner with or you hung out with consistently? You know, it's always that guy. Or, you know, you're on the road, you have lunch at the hotel or something like that. Yeah, me and Chavez, me and me and E, like, like, like he was my guy. And then Ramon, you know what I mean? It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just so many, man, because it was like, me, Chavez, uh, Ramon, Huddy, Zito, Mulder. So it was in Medikino. So it was it was like that group right there every day, like regardless. Every road trip, we're gonna be the ones, we're gonna go eat first, like together. So like so I had like five, six guys that's just every single day. And on the road, you you'll be with them too. Say it again, and it broke uh, up on me a little bit. Oh, sorry. Uh, and on the road, you would be with them all the time. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. As soon as we get, as soon as we get to the hotel, man, we that group right there. We're going to eat, and that was, I mean, that was my, that was my hangout group for sure every day. Right, right. So who was Giambi hanging out with? Or he just stayed in? Man, G, like, like. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Terrence. Give me some team. stories. Give me some classic, some funny it, stories. I'm gonna put it to you like this. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into detail about it. But I'm gonna put it to you like this. Go ahead. I've never been around a rock star ever in my life. But if I picture a rock star, I'll say, okay, he's the closest thing to it. Wow. It's just, you know, what I mean, it's just like I've never seen him frown like. Always upbeat, man. Just like, like you just, I don't know, man. I, I asked him, I'm like, man, I was like, okay, I got it now. Right. And he was like, I was like, now I see why you don't get mad. He was like, what? I was like, because your slumps are 0 for 6, 0 for 7 with like five walks. <laughs> My slump is going to be like 0 for 10 with like no walks. So I was right. like, okay. Now I, see, I was like, now I get it. And he used to just crack up, and uh, he'll be like, a slump for him will be like two for ten, two for eleven, but he'll have like six walks. Right, right. He had a good. And we would joke on him like, "Gee, you in a slump, dog? What's going on, man? Like, come on, dog, you killing us?" And he'll just start laughing because those are his slumps. Right. Yeah, right. he'll be two for 10, two for 12, but he'll have like five walks mixed in. That's what made him so great. It made him so, so great to be around. And um, with Giambi, like he had that it factor, right? He had that strong presence wherever he went. He just felt his energy without him saying a word, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. And he just, you know what I mean? He just, it's like he's that, he's like that really big brother. Mm-hmm. And he's got, and he's got all twenty four of his younger brothers with him, you know. Right. So, so whatever, whatever he say, that's what's gonna happen. That, that's what that's what it felt like. If he was the type of guy, be like, you know what, we're gonna go out here, we're gonna start a fight with these guys. You know what'll happen? Mm-hmm. All twenty four guys are gonna go with him. Right, right. Well, that's just the type of presence that he, you know, what I mean, the presence that he brought to that clubhouse, man, it was just. How was Not his, only how was, off the field, but on the field for right. sure. How was his brother? Was, I mean, look, I know what happened recently. It's a tragedy. Like, I'm, I'm so sorry about this. But how was Z? How was his personality? Man, just 
unbelievable, man. Just like every day, every day, you're gonna, he's gonna make you smile or laugh. I don't care how bad things are going, and um, he's gonna. <laughs> Man, I miss him, man. He he will make you laugh because I know when Jermaine Dye came over, mm -hmm. he um he fouled the ball off his shin. He, he ended up breaking his shin and he was out. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So while he was out, he signed the, the extension. I think like I think like six years or something, 70, whatever it was. And uh <laughs> Jeremy came in and and, and, and dies in there, you know, he's, he's rehabbing or whatever. And Jeremy comes in, and the first thing he says, the first thing he said to die, he was like, damn, JD, he was like, damn, you got 72 with one leg. Just imagine if you had both of them. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I was like, I was like, that was good. Like, it was so funny, man. That was so funny. But that's the type of guy he was, man. Like, So you guys, like, you guys weren't... But do you think there's other teams that are like too serious, like too like all American? You know what I mean? Are there teams like that? Like you got to be serious, yeah. you can't joke around. Yeah, I mean it's just yeah, it's teams like that. I just at that age, like the, my personality and the type of people that I enjoy being around the most. Like Oakland was the best fit for me. I think that's the best that that saved my career because I love the Mets organization, but it wasn't a good fit for me because you know what back then they were it wasn't you you couldn't have a youth movement in New York, right? Yankees, yes. You know you you you're gonna want veteran guys so. Like that trade, Eddie, honestly, like if that trade wouldn't have happened, I don't know what type of time I would have gotten the majors. Right. Like, so like that was the best thing for me. And like I, I tell everybody that that trade really, really helped my career because I knew, at least in Oakland, I knew I was going to get a shot like really soon to play. Yeah. And then, so you guys... I mean, you went all the way almost, right? You got, you made the playoffs. And of course, you know, I'm a diehard Yankee fan. Of course, you know, yeah. you know, we eliminated you guys, right? So now, now let's go to 2001, right? You guys are like coming in spring training. You're like, okay, look, we can hang. We're a competitive team, right? We're going to get to October. But there's one mission. We got to beat the boys in pinstripe because you know they're going to make it, right? Gotcha. Yeah. So that 2001. That's, that's 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 say that again. I said, that's the goal. You know what I mean? That, that was the goal from the season. Like, we knew talent-wise, we had that. But it was one obstacle that we had to overcome. You know what I mean? You, for us, we have to beat the Yankees. We have to beat the Yankees. Like, that that was it. Like, of course, you know, if you don't beat them, you go home. Right. But it felt like if we could beat them in a series, everybody else was a cakewalk. Right. So that was the spring training, right? In spring training 2001, the organization yeah. said, guys, we're going to make October, but there's one team we have to beat. And that's that's what they told you guys, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. So then now you guys are having fun again, right? You guys are like, yo, you guys are winning like crazy, right? You add Johnny yeah. Dame in the summertime. Um, who else? Uh, you know, you guys are just winning. You guys are having fun, right? It's a repeat of 2000 again, right? Yeah. So now. For sure. Here's what happens. I think you guys won 100 games that year too, right? Yeah. And you won 100 games in 2000. We won uh we won 90, we won 90 90 something games in 2000. I think 2001, 2002. Oh, you had the two. It was back to back right. 100. Yeah. Okay, so now you're okay, you make the playoffs, right? You had a great outstanding year. I think you played 162 games, right? All 162. Yeah. So you play yeah. all 162. You guys are having fun. It's a blast. You get to October, first round. It's the 9-11 year, right? But that first game, you put up numbers, man. You were killing the Yanks. Yeah. I mean, you were like just <laughs> you're hitting home runs. You were just styling. You're like, whatever. I'm in the Bronx. I don't care, man. I'm hitting you. Yeah. I'm crushing it. And it's not 
an average pitcher. You're, you're facing Roger Clemens, you know, yeah. Hall of Fame pitcher, Hall of Famer right there if he makes it one day, but that's Hall of Fame numbers. You got Mike Messina. He made the Hall of Fame. So you're crushing yes. against these guys, right? So you, yep. win the, you win the first game. You're like, all right, you know, okay. Now you win game two. Izzy closes the deal, your former yeah. minor league teammate. So now you're up 2 nothing. You get on that plane. You're going back to Oakland. You guys are feeling good, right? Oh, feeling great. So you're like, okay, yo, we, we're we going to take this, man. We are going to take this, right? I mean, look, I would think like that. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, you're up two games. You know what I mean? You're up two games and none. So, like, we we went home saying that we've got to finish it here. Like, that, that was the plan. We have to finish it here. Because that means if you're going back to New York, you're going back for a game five. You don't want to go back there for a game five. Not at that stadium with those guys. We was trying to avoid that. Terrence, when you're in the outfield, those bleacher creatures at Yankee Stadium, are they talking a lot of smack to you? Are they like, you suck. You ain't catching anything, whatever. Are they doing that to you? Oh, yeah. yeah. They give it to you now. They, yeah, they're going to – that's one thing about them. They're going to give it to you, and they're going to give it to you the whole game. Wow. When, I think they give it to you more if, if you're the visiting team and you're winning. They're gonna they're gonna give it to you even worse. <laughs> but th- doesn't it feel great when you hit a home run to right center where they're at? You know what I mean? You're like, take that, right? So let's yeah. th- when you did hit a home run, right? And then you go back yeah. to the outfield, right? Did they say anything? Or did it say you got lucky or whatever? They give you any comments? Oh, yeah, you know yeah. That? yeah, of course. You know it was luck. That's why you can't, you know what I mean? Doesn't matter how good you do against the Yankees, them fans, it's it's still okay. Well, okay, it, it's still not good enough. Right. So, and that, I mean, that's why I like it. That's why I like going there. Mm-hmm. It's just motivation for real, because they're gonna they're gonna be on you for nine innings. I don't care what what the score is, they're gonna be on you for nine innings. Keeps you keeps you in the game for sure. Yeah, Terrence. But did you like feel the motivation? You're in Yankee Stadium. You're the opponents. You know, and you take two games, you're like, hell yeah. You're like, yes. But is the stadium shaking? Did you ever feel that? Man, that is the loudest place for an outside stadium I've ever seen. Like Louder than Minnesota? Like it went, it's Look, Minnesota was loud because it was inside. Mm-hmm. But I know for a fact Yankee Stadium, too, in that outfield when it's, when it's playoff time, like you really have to use, you know what I mean? You have to use hand signals out there in the field too, just like you did if you was inside. Right. Like it's unbelievable. Like, like I remember <laughs> when they hit the back-to-back home runs off of Izzy, Bernie hits one, then Justice comes up and walks it off. That place was absolutely like it felt like that place was shaking. And it happened so quick, like in three pitches. Like, I was like, oh, my God, what just happened? Like, there's no way that just happened. Wow. Like, and it was just, like, you know, some things, Eddie, you can't, like, you would have to be there to really exactly I get to try it. to explain it. But just being there, you got to. Like, it's unbelievable, man. Like, though, all of my time in my career, all the places I played, like, I still have conversations with kids about Yankee Stadium doing playoff time. Like, it's, it's nothing better than that. Yeah, yeah. So, now, let's go to game three, man. Look, this is what's the most cl- – hey, you were involved, man. This is an iconic, yeah. iconic play, right? Yeah. I think you were facing Mike Messina. Yeah. Giambi's at first, Jeremy Giambi. Yeah. No, no, no disrespect. I mean, he is slow. I mean, th- those are facts. You can't, you know. Yeah. There's fast. There's you know average speed, and then there's below average. Giambi was slow. So yeah. Messina threw you a nasty pitch. You just caught it really well. Yeah. Right. You hit it down yeah. the line. Well, at that moment, were you thinking, "Oh hell yeah, Giambi's going to score," or no? I think when I saw it, when I saw it get down to the corner, 
I was like, okay, if if nobody's on, I'm looking three right there anyway. Right. For where that ball went. I'm looking three. I'm, I'm thinking triple the whole time. So I wasn't really paying attention to him. I rounded it. When I rounded second and headed the third, I looked up. I was like, okay, he's got a shot. Because I, when I turned, I saw uh, Spencer and overthrew cutoff man. Mm-hmm. So once I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm good at third. But all of a sudden, I'm watching this play. I'm watching Jesus just come across that infield. And the whole time I'm saying to myself, there's no way he's supposed to be going over there right now. Like that, I've never seen that play. I've been around baseball a long time. I've never seen a shortstop make himself the cutoff man from a throw from right field going to home plate. So I'm watching it and I'm like, there's no way that he's about to go across that field. And I look up and he's across the field. And I watch him catch this ball and backflip this ball and the whole time. If if you it's only a small glimpse of it, but the whole time I'm standing on third base and I'm just like this, like there's no way he's about to flip this ball. I'm standing just like this because I'm watching him come across that infield. Yeah. And he flips this ball and they call him out. And I was like, I told Wash, I was like, Wash, there's no way that just happened. And Wash being Wash, oh, yeah, it happened. I was like, okay, it did happen. I was like, that's not good. Everybody felt it. Everybody. Like, the whole dugout felt it. Like, when you know if you play sports long enough, you – when when things are, are tight, the game is tight, and that one play that you've never seen before happens, the first thing you say, that play right there can change this series. One defensive play like that can change the series. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, man, that's exactly what happened. That one play changed the whole series. And did you, That's what I felt. Did you guys felt like? Oh man, we are in trouble after that play. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, because it's when do you see that? There's no other shortstop in baseball where it came up. Nobody. I don't care who it is. No disrespect to any of the great shortstops. Mm-hmm. Nobody else. And I still bet. I still bet everything I have on that right now. Nobody else would have been there to make that play. Yeah. Nobody. There's nothing nobody can tell me. Nobody else in baseball would have been there. Right, right. You know, but Jeter said, when he broke it down with Howard Reynolds, the MLB Network, he said, once I saw Shane Spencer overthrow the, you know, once it released of his hand, he started running that way. And then he, he said that if the ball was cut, they would have probably thrown you out. That's what he said. Yeah. And Giambi, they'll probably, you know, be like, you know what? Let him get the runners. It'll be one up then. It wouldn't be one nothing. You know what I mean? If Shane Spencer hit the cutoff, man. Yeah. Because they, they, because once Shane Spencer threw it, um, you were around in second at that time. And, you know, you were going towards third. So if they, ca- they could have caught you, but Giambi could have scored. And you know what? They say don't make the first or third out at third. Guess what? No big deal. You got the run. Yeah. But, and then there's questions. If Jeter wasn't there, would that ball still be um, Jeremy Giambi? What do you think? Uh, not not from where it was, because if you look at it, he was, he was in foul territory when he flipped it. You know, he wasn't in play anymore. So that right. means the ball was up the line. He was, yeah, it was off the line a little bit. Yeah, right? so, you know, he was in foul territory when he flipped it. And, and 
not only the fact that he's that he's there, just to be able to backhand that flip and put it in a place where, you know, Posada, he could have flipped it up high, could have short hopped it. Anything else, it had to be a perfect flip to give Posada a chance to make that tag. And the crazy thing is, I think Menachino was on deck, right? Was he at, up think, after you? It was either Frankie or, or Ramon. I want to say it was. I want to say it was Ramon. I think Ramon was hitting after me that series. So then, either him or Menachino. It was one of them. Okay, so one of them. How come I didn't see anybody say down, down, down? Which it was. It was Ramon. It was. It was Ramon. Because I now, if you watch it, you'll see Ramon standing at the plate. But he got his hands up, but he, he's not saying get down. Like, he don't know. Like, I guess it surprised him, too. Right. And it's crazy because when Jeremy got on, when Jeremy got on, Burns, Eric Burns, already had his helmet on. He was about to sprint out the dugout because he, he's thinking we're about to pinch run. But I think what once again what changed that game, you look down there in that bullpen, and that number forty two had got up and started tossing. Yeah. So now you, now you had a okay, you take Jeremy out, and Jeremy had more success off of him than any of our lefties. Jeremy had like at least three hits off him. <laughs> which is way better than anybody else had. It's way more than I had off of Mo. So now you had a dilemma. Okay, I'm thinking ahead. If I pinch run for Jeremy, I'm going to lose his bat at the end of the game. Right, right. Mm. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough situation, you know. And, you, and you're going to see Mo. If that game's tied or if we're up one nothing, you're going to see 42. Right. Regardless. If they go up, you're going to see 42. So, man, that's a tough decision, too. And Jeremy was somewhat successful off of it. Terrence, how does that ball cut towards you? You think it's outside and it just goes in your hands when you face Mariano? Man, look, you it's crazy, Eddie. You know it's coming. Lefty, you know it's coming. And... It just can't just can't square him up. And then later in his career, he was so good. Lefty, you know he's coming with the cutter. So now you're looking for that cutter inside. Now he starts throwing the backdoor cutter to lefties. Right. So that takes you off of looking at middle end. So now you can't even do that anymore. Right. So it was tougher for me later in his career facing him. Than it was early because you know I mean I wasn't successful at all. Don't get me wrong, but earlier you know you could look in like you know he's coming in here. Right. But later he started throwing that same pitch, but he was backdooring at the lefties. So I was like, okay, now I really don't have a chance. Terrence, when a guy like Mariano, right? I mean, you could square it, but you're gonna hit a foul ball towards the dugout, so he didn't even care. No, nah, you're going to pull in the dugout and you're going to foul it off your shin, one of the two. I mean, very rarely. You you got to you gotta guess right location if you're going to barrel him up. Wow. Oh my God. You got to guess right location. Were you, were you the type of guy when you would face Mariano throughout the season, you'd be like, well, let me, let me get my shitty bat because I know he's going to break it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get the worst bat I got, and I'm going to choke up and try to keep that ball off my hands. And it still still didn't work too much, man. He just – I just couldn't barrel him up. You know, I, I, I mean, I tried everything, man. We went to shorter bats. Just, I just could not barrel him up. All right. So now they're up – you guys are still up 2-1. Then that I think it was a Sunday game for game four. I think they beat you guys by six runs. Yeah. Now you go back to Yankee Stadium. Was the clubhouse, was the energy a little lower when you guys got back to Yankee Stadium for game five? Yeah, honestly, Eddie, I'm going to tell you something about that clubhouse. The energy never got lower. <laughs> I mean, energy was the same because we still felt like we had a shot. 
Okay. You know, we still felt like we had a shot and and we knew we knew it wasn't gonna be easy. We knew we let two of them get away at home. What we did not want to do, but you know, we went in game five, man. We were still upbeat, still having fun. Cause that's all we knew. Right. You know, like like I couldn't like I couldn't say how good that team would have been if it was just serious all the time. Like, like I don't think that would work for us because we didn't – the guys we had were – you know what I mean? We had fun. You know, we like to joke around, but when it's time to play, it's time to play. Right. So I think, I mean, the energy was still the same. We just knew we were in a dogfight. Right, right. So now the game is over. You guys lost. It was a heartbreaker, right? I mean, you're going back home on that yeah. plane, a West Coast trip, six hours. Six hours. Well, you guys like, guys like, oh, my God, I can't oh, believe this God. just happened. Yeah. Because that hurts, yeah. man. Yeah, that will hurt because, you know, that year, because that's 2001, that's the year Yankees and um, D-backs played World Series. And it's crazy because we both, everybody said, like pretty much all around baseball, the winner of this Yankees A series is going. It's going. It's going. Right. right. It's going to the World Series because that same year we went in there and we swept the diamond back. So it wasn't like we weren't even worried about that. You know, we went in there and showed them. We, we beat Schilling. We beat Johnson. You know what I mean? We went in there. We swept them. Right. So I think out of all the teams we had, that team right there, I felt like was, was our World Series team. Yeah. I honestly felt that because we were just, you know what I mean? We were really good. We were really good. And. Listen, you know, I was I was still a kid, but I was panicking. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. I mean, you know, Yankee fans are like very hardcore. You know how we are, man. Yeah. <laughs> we're diehards. We're like expectations. We're spoiled. Terrence. Yeah. You know, we're spoiled with these Yankees because, you know, how many teams out there can honestly say, yeah, I mean, we get to the World Series here and there, but with the Yankees out, it's every year we got to win the title. Oh yeah, right. For sure, right. and it's a lot of pressure, Eddie. I, I true, but yeah. You know, listen, this is New York. I mean, it's a yeah. it's equivalent to the Lakers in basketball. It's equivalent yeah. to New England Patriots in football. It's like the expectation when Tom Brady was there, of course. Yeah, you know, it's it's like you gotta win, man. It, same thing in the Golden State and Warriors in basketball too. It's like they they expect to win every year. We're spoiled, and when you guys were up two nothing, I was like. There's no way. And it was 9-11 year. You know what I mean? So we needed that relief. You yeah, hear? so it, it was... Do you hear me, Terrence? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, it went out for a second, but I got you back oh, now. okay. No, I'm just saying that we needed... It was a 9-11 year, and we needed relief, man. We are like, come on, yeah. you know? And then, yes, we won, but we didn't win the whole thing. We're still upset about that. Yeah. That Texas League... Yeah. By Louis Gonzalez. And I honestly thought too, man, like like I was like I was rooting for the Yankees mm. in that World Series. Because I, you know what I mean? I, I just thought they were better. You know, I just right. I mean, I just thought the Yankees were better. And you know, and of course it didn't happen that way, but right. Right. it's and just playing, just playing against them, and and knowing that, ah, man, that should have been like that. Because I was really thinking that Arizona did not want to play us in the World Series. Right. Like we just, like we honestly, like we manhandled them when we went in there. Right. Like we swept them at home. Like it wasn't even close. Yeah, Terrence, let me ask you this. But we were so good. No, no, go ahead. You were, you got, you were, you were so good. Go ahead. No, I was just saying that team. We were so good and, and so confident that it really, like, it really didn't matter who we played. We just knew with the Yankees, we knew we had to play 
our best baseball. We get past the Yankees. We all said we get past the Yankees. You're going. This is our World Series team. Right. In the in the in the clubhouse, guys lift weights. Like were they going like like was Giambi that guy that would lift weights and G, and his brother or did you lift weights? I mean, what was it like? Yeah, those guys, man, they they work, man. That's that's one thing a lot of people you don't get a chance to see, but I mean, those guys work, man. They were I mean, my first year there, you know, that's when Matt Stairs was there and, and John Jaha, you know, those men, those they get after it, man. Like I was surprised. Like, and it it made me because I wasn't a big weight guy, you know what I mean? I did a lot of heavy squats and stuff, but as far as lifting upper body, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't big on that, but right. man, those guys, they got after it, man. Tejada got after it. Chavez, you know, so, you know I mean, guys lifted like they really lifted. 2002 season, you guys won 20 games in a row. Yes. How, how, I mean, talk to me about that, talk. man. Did you guys have a blast or what? Man, that was and I think what made it what made it even better, like we got off to such we were terrible the first month. Like we were so bad. <laughs> like we were so bad the first month of the season, man. It was like it was it was crazy, man. I think at one time we were like nine, ten games under five hundred, man. Like, like struggling, just trying to find our identity. You know, we had lost G and 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 lost Damon, and so I was like, man. But you know, just, just credit the art, man. He just. Like, like, he never, like, that guy never lost hope in us. Like, like he, you know what I mean? Like, he never lost hope. Like, he was the same guy every day, even when we were struggling. Right. And we knew we were good. We still had good players, good pieces, man. I think it was just, just a, I guess the, the hype over the offseason with the guys we lost, man. You know, you lose, you lose those three guys, man. You lose Izzy. G and Johnny D. So it's like, oh my God. But Still it also it gave us that edge, too. Yeah. yeah. It was one thing we had. We still had those boys to get on that bump now. Yeah. So that was, <laughs> we still had those three horses to touch that mound every three, every three, every five days. So we was good. Let me ask you this about Barry Zito. Is Zito in, like just like he's more of like, Easy going, relaxed guy. Like doesn't talk oh, that yeah. much, right? Yeah, Z was cool, man. Like he was. <laughs> you know, some guys you can't you can't explain them, man. He's just one of them guys you just can't you can't explain, man. They just man on the days of pitch they come do their job. The other days, man, they just they just laid back, man. Just just fun kids, man, having fun. So it. Well, they were so good, but they just, I don't know, man. They just come out and do their job, man, and just have fun. So it. I felt like Mulder. You know, was more, I felt like Mulder was more of the all American guy. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, Mulder was, you know, he's more of the preppy type. You know, Huddy, you know, Huddy like me, Huddy old country boy, man, right down the street from Bama. So he, mm. you know, just good old country boy, man. Zito just. Just, just Barry and Mulder was more the you know what I mean preppy type, but he was still cool though. You know it was who was <laughs> it wasn't was like best, he was a, he who was, was an asshole. Like, right. He was unbelievable. Who yeah. was who dressed the best? Was it Mulder who dressed like he had to wear, wear those nice suits? Yeah, I, yeah, Mulder. I think out of all of them, Mulder probably was the best dressed out of all of them. Mm. Wow, you know Terrence, it, it's like. You you miss it, right? You miss those days. You experienced yeah, it. You, you lived it. it. You you could talk about those days to anybody. And I'm sure when you go out and you know, people might recognize you 
or if you tell them who you are, they're like, oh, wow, right? But when you tell these stories, are their eyes like, what? Yeah. You were you, you, you yeah. part of that Jeter flip? What? You part of that Oakland A's team, right? Yeah, they remember all that, man. And it's fun, too, man, when you – um. Because even now with the younger generation, with some of these tournaments I go to, like, I mean, everybody loves the Yankees. So anything that happened with the Yankees, they're going to remember. I don't care. They're 15, 14, 15. Their parents have told them about that story. So, you know what I mean? But it, it's fun, man. It was – at that time, it wasn't fun. You know what I mean? I was you – know I mean, I was, I was upset, but – now, you know, it's always what ifs. Well, what if he would have slid? And but like I told him, man, in, in the middle of a game, there's no, there's no what ifs. You know, what I'm saying it's what ifs happen after, after the fact. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then after that, you know, like I said, man, like I feel like it changed the series, but it didn't lose the series for us because we made a lot of mistakes too. <laughs> Towards the end, man, we made a lot of mistakes in that game five, too. We kicked it around a little bit, too. Right. Now, here's my question. I had this thought. Hold on a minute. There's something. Um, when you robbed Manny Ramirez, that he, he was about to hit a game-winning home run. You robbed him at Fenway Park, right? Yeah. The, Koch, he's another uh, New Yorker. Did he take you out after the game and buy you, like, a humongous dinner? Man, I'm going to tell you what he did, man. We got back to Oakland, man. He had this um, he had this unbelievable wine set mm-hmm. sent to me in the clubhouse, man. Like, nice, fancy, like, five different bottles of wine, but it was in a fancy case, like, like a four-foot-tall case. And each bottle had his own little section, man, with the with the customized glasses and all that, man. It was a it was nice, man. Like it was a really nice gift. So, I took care of you, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. That's my guy, man. He looked out for me. Do you still talk to any of the guys, like here and there, or anybody you're still close with? Yeah, you know, you, you know, every, you know, everybody goes in certain ways now. But right. you know, you you'll get a chance every now and then to um, to talk to some of the guys. You know, me and uh, me and Justice, me and DJ. You know, I, I pick up the phone, I'll text G, DJ, man, we a joke. God, man, he's an unbelievable guy. You know what I mean? We a joke and laugh. And, you know, I talk to him more than anybody else. He's in San Diego, he's more, right, DJ? Yeah, yeah, in San Diego. And, he's back and forth San Diego to L.A. because his son plays football for UCLA. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um So you still talk to Justice? Yeah, I talk to Justice the most and then uh of course Huddy, you know, Huddy's the pitching coach at Auburn where my son's going, so I get a chance to see Huddy a lot. And uh haven't talked to Ramon in a while. And that that's pretty much it. Shab, you know, Shab is the hitting coach at with the Yankees, so at well, some actually, point no, I'll think, I'll talk to him at some point. I think he's with the Mets now, I think. I don't think he's with the Yanks. Really? I think he's with the Mets. I think. I think the Yankees offered him, but I think he did something with the Mets. Oh, okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought he had took that um that Mets job. Yeah. And then so now speaking of your kids, all right. Now listen, you got five kids, all right? That's like a starting basketball team right there. Okay? You yeah. Got five. Now you got one kid. Where is he right now? It's uh his name is Jalen, right? Yeah. Him. Okay, so what's he doing yeah. now? He's at Sanford in uh, Birmingham. He's pitching. He's pitching up at Sanford. And is that a JUCO or is that a four-year school? That's four years, D1. Okay, yeah. that's four years, D1. And what year yeah. is he? What year is he? He's, uh, he actually graduates. He graduates in uh, April. But he's got he's got an extra year because of the COVID year. Mm, okay. So we're going to see how things go this year with the draft and to see if he wants to take that, takes, take that extra year next year. So that's a good thing. So he's, you know what I mean? He's having a good last outing was a little rough yesterday, but 
I told him, like, son, I mean, that's going to happen. You know, you, you went into that with a one-two. First four starts, you had a one-two. So I was like, man, it's just, you know, one of them days, man, they got the best of you. Won't, won't be the last days, huh? Right, exactly. And then, so he has a shot getting drafted this year, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now we have this other kid right here. So he committed to Auburn uh, for yeah. next year, right, in the fall? Yeah. Yeah, and it starts in the fall. So your former teammate, Tim Hudson, right? He's that's yeah. that's gonna be his pitching coach. Yeah. So was was Timmy excited to say, he's like, oh yeah, man, you're Terrence Long's son. This is great, right? Yeah. Yeah, Timmy, you know, Timmy's got a chance to see him because um private school, Timmy's son, and they played against each other in high school too. So mm -hmm. so Timmy's got a chance to see him. You know, but Timmy saw him when he was like 87, 88 because he was playing shortstop and playing center field. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, once he stopped, once he stopped playing the position and just pitched every day, like Timmy and them, they got a chance to see him that one day, man. He was good. He was like 95. He was like 93 to 95 that day. So he's throwing 93 to 95? Yeah. How tall oh, yeah. is he? Yeah. He's like six three, like six four. Man, yeah, he's real, real tall and slim, man. That's an MLB body right there, right? Yeah, I mean, he's wow. got he's got some room to put some weight on too, man. It's like one eighty. Yeah, but still, man, that's that's unreal. Yeah. ninety three to ninety five. Yeah, yeah. Wow. he put he runs up there. He's a pitcher too, man. Is he yeah, a he sophomore pitches. in this school right now? Not he's a freshman there. right oh, now. He's yeah, freshman. he's a freshman. He's okay. First year JUCO. Yeah. Oh wow! So they grabbed him right yeah. away. Yeah, you're coming to you're coming yeah. to us. <laughs> yeah. And then you have this little guy right here, and I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't want your other kids to like be like, "What? What did my dad say?" <laughs> you said that this kid's the best one out of all. Of them. Yeah, you see, you see what he's got in his hand. That's, oh yeah, he's that's, got the that's bat. What he, that's what he's gonna take. Yeah, man, he's a he's got he's the only one that hits lefty. Man, they all throw right. But he's my only lefty man. He just Eddie, he absolutely punishes the ball, man. He's gonna he's gonna be a hitter. You know what I mean? Hitting is natural to him. I had to really work with the other two. Mm -hmm. Like with him, I just let him hit, man. Lefty, he his balls out the other way. He's gonna pull them. You know, lefty on lefty, he'll tell you that. He was like, Dad, I'm gonna I'm gonna bust him to left center. Like that's just how he thinks because you know I mean me being left handed and mm -hmm. but yeah same exact same swing Eddie I mean stance follow through everything even that nice uh, exactly follow through you like just chilling when you hit that home run yep. right <laughs> yeah everything's the same man I, I meant to have something ready for you but I'll I'll send them to you one after this and let you look at them I got some videos of them hitting oh man, okay week. I could have put it up right here too but I know it, man I. I wouldn't even think so about it. now when when he hits right, Terrence, he is he also like dedicated? He's like, Dad, I want to hit every day. Dad, I want I want to do this every day. Is he is he that is he that type of kid? Yeah, he. You know, what I mean, I had to like early. I had to get him away from that because I was like, son, you, you know, what I mean, he's big and he's fast, so we let him play football for the first time, mm -hmm. and. Man, he started out just getting the feel for it. By the third game, man, he was starting defensive end and middle linebacker. So he's starting to like football too. And he, he's big and he's fast. So so I was like, okay, that's good. We got an outlet now because, you know, just giving them another chance to right. just play another sport. Because that baseball, man, you know, we love it, but it's so hard. You know what I mean? It's, it's so much failure involved. So. Just give him another chance to play something else, but but yeah, he'll hit every day. If I let him, he would hit every single day. Wow. I mean, listen, I mean that's look, you know what? In New York City right now, you know, you see kids, they don't play outside anymore. They don't have that dedication. I don't know how you guys in the South, how you guys live for sports. I mean, is that is that the only thing you think of like to get up there, you know what I mean? Like, to be like, I want to be the man, you know what I mean? I want to yeah. play high school, college. I want to get to the big leagues or whatever, NFL, NBA, whatever, right? That's that's the mentality down there in the South when you're an athlete? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
because there's so many, especially with, with saving being around, man, there's so many opportunities, man. And, and you have to, like when I was growing up, mm-hmm. you had no other choice but to go outside. You couldn't sit in the house. Me too. Right. Yeah. You got to go outside and play. Like now, you know what I mean? They don't, things have changed, man. It's video games. You don't have to go outside anymore. But I was honestly blessed because my kids don't even play video games. They got them, but they don't play them. They'd rather be outside. Right. They don't even like hitting inside. Like we got indoor facilities. They don't even like hitting indoors. They like hitting on the field. Well, they, they want to it's time to pick the balls up. They want to play guerrilla baseball, baby. They want that yeah. feeling. Hit it over the fence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every every ball's a, a home run in the cage. <laughs> That's what I tell them. Right. Yeah. You, you hit about 10 home runs in the cage today. But yeah, they like to be outside, man, which is good, which I really enjoy that because I like being outside. Yeah. Terrence, are there any Hall of Fame pitchers that made the Hall of Fame? That you really hit well. I mean, did you hit? It looks like you hit Clemens well. You, it looks like you hit um, Messina. Yeah, I hit Clemens. Yeah, I hit Clemens well. I, I mean, I I wouldn't say I hit Pedro well. I mean, I got two bombs off him, but but that's because he left the pitch up in the zone. Because that changeup yeah. is vicious, right? From a from a left handed oh, point yeah. of view, right? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So I think I think I hit two mistake pitches out on him. That, you know what I mean? But other than that, but. Terrence, who was you know vicious? I mean? Who was vicious against you? Who was like, damn, I can't get this guy, man. Man, I'm going to tell you who gave me fits, man. I, I just could never figure him out, man, was Pettit. Really? Like, I couldn't. Like, he would throw that two-seamer. And would come in on you? And then, then that's running in on you. Then all of a sudden you gear up for the two seam, and now you got to worry about the cutter and the slider and the breaking ball. I'm like, ah. and it was so smooth, man. It was, and it was just like I could never, like I could never figure him out. Like, I mean, I hit a couple balls good off of him, but it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't right. enough to. Yeah, it wasn't enough to say I own him. He can honestly say he owned me because he did. Terrence, when you're like, did you ever see his pickoff move while you're at first base? You know, did he ever throw? You're like, oh man, he fooled me. I mean, you didn't get you didn't get caught, but you're like, whoa, that pickoff move is nasty. That's that's what I'm saying, Eddie. I saw it from the dugout. And I don't think I made it the first off of him. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew it. I knew he had a good one for watching him pick other people off, but I don't think I got the first. If I got the first, it wasn't many times. Right. And if I did get the first, I wasn't getting off far enough for him to pick me off. So. <laughs> well, then, you know, you're probably hoping, okay, it's one and two count. He's going to throw nasty shit on the dirt probably. I'm going to chase it, and he's going to pass Posada, and I can get to first maybe. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah his pickoff move, man, was at that time was the best. I think it was the best in baseball, honestly. Like it was, it was really, it was great. It's probably the best one I've seen. Terrence, was Clemens splitty nasty as hell? Yes, because it was hard. You know, it was, you know, you got to remember, man, it, it split was still what, 86, 87. Right. That's, that, that's hard. You know, that, that's a hard split finger. So, you know, and, and at one point in time, you know, he was throwing and it was like 88 to 90. Wow. So, you know, I mean, it was you just trying to beat him to it. Right. And with the you sinker, know, it, the sinker makes the bat feel heavy, right? When you hit the ball on a good sinker? Yeah. Heavy balls. That's what we call them, man. Like, like, like you make contact and the ball and knock the bat out your hand. Those heavy fast balls. Like, I. Mm-hmm. I used to like the guys that used to see how hard they can throw it and just throw it straight. Right. But those sinker ball guys just feel like you just like the ball just knocking the bat out your hand. That's what I call it. Like, man, that ball's heavy. Yeah. Who who had the nastiest sinker when you played? Man, and and, and hard sinker, man, Jason Grimsley. You remember Grimsley? Yeah. 
Yeah, Grimsley, man, his sinker was – God, man, it was like – and, you know, Grimsley was like 95, 96. Wow. So, Grimsley, Jason Grimsley, man, that, that sinker he used to throw was – I guess that's one of the harder ones. You know, really, a lot of people didn't throw sinkers, but but Grimsley, he threw a heavy ball. And whose slider was nasty that swept like you were like, whoa. Whew. Man, I, now that's a good one because I, I faced man, I faced a few guys with really good sliders. As far as can't go starters because I, you know what I mean, facing starters, I really didn't see a lot of sliders so I, i'll go to the bullpen man and jc romero you remember jc yeah, from the yeah, twins yeah yeah left the reliever left the, yeah yeah oh my god like he used to just and he was like petty he would run that two seamer in on your hands and left it on left it then that slider was just the slider was just filthy man like it was just and you don't have to be lefty because righty sliders really didn't really didn't bother me too much. You but know, you, but the you righties I had trouble with. But with the righty slider, you love it when it's like low and inside. It's a yeah. golf swing for you. It's like, oh yeah, it's I think the righties, the righties I had trouble with was the ones with the good changeups. Mm. And now, Terrence, yeah. when when you're an outfielder, is this true or I feel like the announcers just say this, the colorist, right? When you're like in the outfield. And they said, well, outfielder could read pitches right off the bat. Is that true? Man, you you, you play the ball off the bat, but it, it's – You're not, like, shifting towards your right side, like, okay, uh, this is going to – it's a pitch inside fastball, so I'm going to start running towards well, – let's say you were nah, playing left you, field. You you're gonna, your, right? No, nah, you, you, you get your scout report, man, and then you go – that's just like with Jeter, okay – you throw him a fastball in, he's righty. If I take off, if I take off the right center, like okay, he's gonna pull this ball in the gap. That's that's impossible because I know I've seen him take balls middle in or in on his hands and hit line drives the right center. So you have to, <laughs> so you have to go with the scout report and just stay there. Right. Same thing with Manny. You know, I I, I was in center. I saw Manny hit two home runs against us. Both pitches in the same spot. The first one he pulls over the monster. And the second home run, another fastball in, he gets his hands inside and hits it out the other way. Wow. So I'm just playing. So now when you got guys like that, you have to see the ball off the bat. Right, exactly. You're not assuming. That's it. Right, you're not assuming. it off the bat. Because I can't stand when these announcers are like, well, he saw it early. No, he didn't. That's impossible. No. Nah, no, nah, you have to see the ball off the bat and take your good routes, get your good jumps. That's it. That's all you can do. Exactly. All right. So, all right. That's good. So, Terrence, what are you doing now? What's going on right now with your life? Man, you know, I just – baseball, man, just try to try to figure out – catch. Jalen's the Sunday starter, so that's good. Kyron, Kyron's the he's the Friday guy. So I can catch Friday. I can take Saturday and work my 12 year old. And then Sunday I can catch Jalen's game when, when they're in Birmingham. So that's my schedule until what's this? April. That's my schedule to the end of May. <laughs> you know, Terrence, I really sure. am. I really appreciate fathers like you. I grew up without a yeah. father. He left me when I was four. I don't know where he's at. I don't know. But it don't matter. You know, I don't play no victim. Oh, none of that, right? But I just yeah. love when I see fathers do everything they can to put a smile on their face, uh, on, their son, on their kid's face, and, every, and you're doing everything you can to help them out in what they want to do in life. I mean, I, I, I love that. You know, I, I, I give you so much praise for that. Yeah, just, you know what I mean, just be in there, man, to get, them, to get them in position to understand, you know what I mean, what they're, what, as far as what they're up against is playing this game and, you know, mentally preparing, mentally preparing them for the failure that you're going to and the obstacles that you're going to 
you know, I mean, you're going to have playing this game. But, you know, the good thing about it is, like, you know what I mean? They're good at it. Yeah, I do. It's got somewhat do with me. Yeah, it does. But I also know what type of work them kids put in, too, man. Like, right. like I could be a major leaguer, but if your kids don't put the work in, like, like those boys, man, one thing I can say about them, like, People don't understand. We used to have like 9 30, 10 30 nights during the week when school was in working. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? They were dedicated. They were dedicated at a young age. It's it's nothing that I had to be like, I'm gonna make you play baseball. Right. Because I told you my my 16 year old Dakari, he don't even want to go to a game. Wow. So he <laughs> so you know, it, 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 he he never wanted to play. Like like even when he was little, he just he just didn't want to play, which is fine. But he's a genius too. So, <laughs> so yeah, well, he, he's the really future matter. CEO of tech of technology. Yeah, companies. man, he's, <laughs> he's super smart, man. He's he's unbelievably smart. Like just waiting to see what college he wants to go to. So but he's probably going to go to man. MIT. <laughs> yeah, it's either Vanderbilt or Auburn. He likes Vanderbilt. He likes Auburn. So he he could go anywhere in the country with his with his grades. So it's just yeah. up to him where he wants to go. Alabama, huh? I mean, the you know every time I think of Alabama, I think of the movie My Cousin Vinny. Yeah, that's hey man, that's my favorite movie too. Is by it? the way, oh, okay, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, is it true? It's like <laughs> you guys eat grits. Is like I had no clue what grits means. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yeah, that's my favorite movie. By the way, man. <laughs> So he portrayed it really well in Alabama, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did. Oh, man, Terrence, it's, it's been a pleasure, man. Seriously, it's like I always, always thought of that Jeter play throughout my mind, like, wow. And then I finally meet the guy who was responsible for that hit. <laughs> it's you. Yeah, man, it was a... You know, you got you to gotta tip your hat, man. You got to tip your hat to him, man. That's why he's – man, that's why that's why he is who he is, man. Like, you can't – But you played for the mean, Yankees just, for a little bit, you know, just because Hideki Matsui got hurt. You were there yeah. for, like, maybe two, three weeks. Did you and Gina yeah. talk about that play? It's like, did he ever, like, tease you about You know, that? We, we did because, you know, coming up, me and Gina, we had the same age. So it was like – you know, even when I was in, uh, like, the off season, he would send me the Jeter cleats. And, you know, and once I finally got there, I think, to be honest with you, Eddie, man, once I got there, I don't even think we talked about the play. I was just so excited to be there. Like, mm-hmm. Jeter, A-Rod, Sheffield, man, like, Bernie. Like, Bernie was the coolest. Oh, man, like, I was just like, man. Like, okay, Yankee Clubhouse is not like Oakland Clubhouse, that's for sure. You know, you have to have your headphones on in there. can't play the music out loud. Right. So it was. And you only play the music when you win, right, in Oakland? Yeah. Right. Yeah, only when you win. Yeah. Only when you win. No music. No music after loss. Well, Terrence, look, man, you had a great career. I mean, look, it was... you, you're in the big leagues, man. And I always tell people. It's not just getting to the big leagues. It's staying there. Yeah. And that's really hard to do, man. Yeah. Because they're going to figure you out. But then you have to adjust. If you don't adjust, you're getting the boot. you got to find a real job now. (laughs) Yeah. Right? I mean, that's how it is. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, listen, Terrence, don't go anywhere. Uh, Let me me just – I just need a a couple of favors. Let me just end it. So, Terrence Long, baby, we all all remembered him. He is the man. All right. Here we go. Hey, everybody, this is Terrence Long. Hey, I want you guys to do me a really big favor. I want you guys to subscribe to Eddie Mata's YouTube page. Unbelievable guy, great interview, man. Go check him out. Go check him out, man. You'll really enjoy his page.